to entrance. The recording has started. Um, so thank you guys for reaching out and, and organizing this. Um, hopefully we can share a lot of great information with everybody this morning. All right, so a quick introductions of the panelists that are on with us today. Um, my name is Sarah Jones. I am the awards chair for AAF District 7. So I have the privilege of seeing um, all of your wonderful work when it makes it to the district level of the competition. We also have two panelists joining us from the entrance side who have both um, entered a number of years in the local awards and also are recipients of both district and national Addies. Keith with Intermark and Susan at Finn Partners. So you'll hear from the two of them here in a bit. And then to represent the student side, we have two student advisors and professors who have agreed to speak with you all, Mark with the University of Alabama and Jacob from University of Southern Mississippi. And rounding out our panel is a gentleman named Jeff, who is a distinguished awards judge, um, has judged in a few of our markets before, um, and will be able to share some, some tips from the judging perspective of reviewing work. So before we jump into the panel discussion, um, I realize some of you may be uh, old hat when it comes to American Advertising Awards, but I did just wanna do a very, very quick overview and let you guys know kind of the latest uh, numbers. So the American Advertising Awards is the nation's largest creative competition. Um, and we have over 25,000 entries that come from across all of the markets in the United States each year. The competition does have three tiers. Um, and so as many of you may know, it begins on the local level. So for those of you sitting in markets across the Southeast, there is a local AAF chapter who is charged with overseeing the competition. It is a tremendous amount of work if you have ever spoken to an awards chair or an awards committee there, but they are responsible for the intake of all of your fabulous entries, processing them, overseeing the judging process, and then of course, forwarding the winners. So it is important for everybody to know that your work must be entered on the local level in order to advance. You cannot just jump straight to the regionals or the nationals. Another important note here is that the intention of the awards is for the entry to be submitted in the market where the work was created not necessarily where the client is based or where the media ran. So if an agency is sitting in Atlanta and they're doing work for a company in Seattle, that entry should be entered in Atlanta, not in Seattle. If an agency has multiple offices and a specific office is who was servicing them, that can get a little tricky. Um, we can certainly help advise you if you're in that situation where you have multiple offices who share a client. But the goal here is to recognize the creators of the work, the people that come up with the wonderful concepts, do the writing, create the, the artwork and the art direction, and where those people sit, not necessarily where the clients are based. So after that local competition level happens, we go to what we call the district level. Um, and for those of you who are unfamiliar, the American Advertising Federation is organized into 15 districts across the country. All of us sit in District 7, uh, which by the way, many of us will tell you is the best. Um, and District 7 includes markets across Alabama, Mississippi, Tennessee, Georgia, and the lower half of Louisiana. So we have about between 19 and 20 markets a year across the Southeast that compete in uh, the American Advertising Awards. Um, and for anybody that's in an outlier and you're not sure which market you're supposed to be entering, please reach out and we'll make sure to connect you with the right group. When we get to this district level, we see about 5,000 entries that have made it from all of your local markets. And the way that that works is all of the gold winners in the local competition automatically forward onto district. And those of you who receive a silver Addy have the option to forward. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about forwarding later, so I don't want to steal any thunder from Keith and uh, Susan. But it's really important to consider forwarding your silvers because it is an entirely new set of judges at the district level and what won silver locally may win a gold at district. So we really encourage you to consider forwarding all of the winning work. After we complete what my main work is, which is at the district level of organizing that competition, our winners are then forwarded to the third and final tier, which is national. Here, you're going to be competing against all of the gold Addy winners from across the 15 districts. And of course, here again, with the option for silvers to forward. So a quick breakdown by the numbers. I know I mentioned at the beginning that there are about 25,000 total entries that come across the United States. About 4,000 of those originate in District 7. So we've got a pretty large presence in our markets. And even if you think you're in a small market where your entry doesn't make a huge dent, 
It does. Um, again, 4,000 of those 25,000 come from across our five state area. After we get to the uh, district competition, there are usually about 500 that advance out of those 4,000. Um, so again, that would be 500 that are competing at the district level for professional entries, about 250 in the student side. And then when you look at national, only about 800 remain. So it is an extremely rigorous competition. And one of the reasons that it's really exciting and you should be very proud when you win a national Addy. It is a huge recognition. Um, so again, just wanted you guys to have a little info by the numbers in case you were only familiar with the local level. Are there any initial questions that I can take as far as the numbers or the three tiers of the competition before we jump into any tips? All right, perfect. So at this point, um, I'm excited to turn over to the panelists um, and be able to share some tips and let you guys know that again, that this webinar and hopefully any outreach that happens after it, we're here to help. Uh, we wanna make sure that you guys have all of the information to prep for the competition and have plenty of time to, to get those entries polished up and, and ready to turn in at the end of the year. So we're gonna start with some tips for the entrance um, and I'll let Keith and Susan, whoever would like to start, introduce themselves and give a couple of tips about preparing your entries. <laughs> I'm a ladies first man, Susan. <laughs> All right, well, hello, I'm Susan Hart. I am um, traffic manager for Finn Partners Southeast. We're based in Nashville. So our local market um, where we start with our Addy entries is, is with the Nashville market. Um, I am going to try to um, share my screen and show you our entry. This is not the complete submission because um, in addition to the actual entry, we also um, take advantage of the fields where you can have supporting um, documentation. Like, here we go. Okay, looks like I'm gonna be able to do this. Um, but this is the actual entry. I had wanted to show the video that we sent alongside it, which also um, highlights uh, the construction and you'll see what I'm talking about. Um, okay, I'm sorry, Sarah, are you able to to pull this up and play it for me. Sure, give me just one second and I will pull it up for you. Bear with us, please. Well, in the meantime, maybe Keith, you might want to go. Oh, here we go. Oh, <laughs> All right. So this was, um, as I said before, this is our actual entry. We did send a video submission as well as some B-roll video that, um, that highlighted the fabrication of this media kit. Um, second slide is our summary. We kept it, you know, brief. Um, and talked about what really makes this media kit um, stand out. And um, the front of the media kit is an, a replica of the actual door of um, from uh, Lynchburg, Tennessee, where they make every drop of Jack Daniels. We collected some of our information from the summary from the actual creative brief um, that initiated the project. So that's another tip I would say in um, discussing your creativity to highlight those things that were actually you know, important to um, the work. All right, and then we had some really great photography um, that highlighted the product, the different pieces, the print pieces that were included in the kit, um, down to the chips that were soaked in whiskey. So whenever the um, 
box was open, you got a nice little waft of the Jack Daniels whiskey. And I think this is a great example, just while Susan's walking you through this, as you guys know, most of the, the judging has gone virtual the last few years. And for many of you, when you have a, a piece like this one, which is extremely detailed and you can't touch it and feel it, the photography and compiling these images is really important for the judges to understand the thought that went into the piece. Um, you'll see this is dropped into a PowerPoint. It does not have to be uh, you know, a, a fancy uh, format, but in this case, it's a great way to showcase all the pieces that were included, as well as some of those highlights from the brief, like Susan mentioned. All right, there you go. And the video that accompanied this, and again, I apologize um, not having it available to you, but it had some really great music, some peppy music. It showed the unboxing experience, if you will. So you got to see how the box worked. You got to see um, how the products were placed. Um, so it added to that entry that there was, um, you know, you could really, the judge could really experience what the um, consumer did. And so that one, we won gold at the local level, but we won silver at district. And so we went ahead, as we do with all of our sil silver wins, we forwarded those on to the next um, leg of the competition where it won gold at nationals. So I highly recommend that everyone take advantage of uh, forwarding those um, silvers. And Susan, do you have, you know, this is a good example because you've got this, this PowerPoint deck put together. Um, obviously, depending on the type of entry, not everyone necessarily needs a video, um, but could you give everybody an idea of kind of how you go about organizing your list to make sure that all these pieces are included? Because I think that's the, the kind of time question that we get a lot is, wow, mm -hmm. that sounds like a lot of work, um, but trying to make it simple so that the judges who have never seen the work before can really experience what the original design intent was. Well, you know, we, we typically will, whenever we are working on project, we know really early on if it's going to be um, American Advertising Award worthy. So we go ahead and we collect um, all of the assets needed for that. Um, and then um, we start talking through, we actually open up the rules and the categories of the awards um, and start going through all the different categories where we feel like we have work that will, um, that we can submit within those categories. And then we, we vet those um, to what we feel like is going to be, um, you know, worth the entry fee and our time to create the entry. And then we make a list and we get everything gathered and we um, have a photographer that, you know, takes all the still shots. Um, the, our production manager is on hand so they can really help highlight the, um, the production notes because you're having your discussing you're describing those production notes but you need photography and videography that shows the gloss the debossing the um all of those things that you you know you want them to experience want them to imagine experiencing in real time but through photography and video um but i get and then you know we get it all packaged up um organized by um, folders by client, because many times you will submit um, the creative, the same creative, but in several different categories, um, or you may have multiple clients. So we organize by client, then we break, break it down and organize by submission. And we try not to compete against ourselves. So we try to um, enter in categories just, you know, like we wouldn't want to unless we really feel strong that, you know, we can, um, we can compete against ourselves. We will typically enter just um, that work within one category and not multiple clients in the same category. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, we've done it before and, and done well. Yeah. Always depends on the work that year, right? It does. So Susan mentioned one thing with, um, you know, sharing artwork across multiple entries. So for those of you who are unfamiliar, there is a really handy copy feature that is built into the open water software. So once you go through and you do the initial work to get everything posted, you do have the ability to copy some of that information and the attachments over. So you don't have to do it manually each time. Um, if you're unfamiliar with how to do that, we've got a couple of screenshots we can share out after the webinar. 
So Keith, um, I know you've got a, a video I've got queued up here, but you want to do a quick intro and then we can share uh, your case study? Oh, yeah. Yeah, um, I shouldn't have, shouldn't have let Susan go first. She just said everything I was going to say, but uh, <laughs> I suppose I'll, I'll fill in some of the... Um, yeah, I'm Keith Otter, uh, Chief Credit Officer at Intermark Group in, in Alabama. Not from around the those parts of London, but uh, here I am. Um, Hey, I, I, it's funny coming from uh, another country to the US and then finding all about the Addy Awards. It's been really good for me because I love the fact that, uh, you know, that kind of like, like the three tier being able to end things and the cost per entry. When you look at some of the other awards, it's really a you can afford to, like us as an agency, we can afford to enter, you know, a lot more things in different categories. So, one thing I would say be think a lot about is like sometimes you might do like a really good video um, but it's really well written it's really well art directed it's really well produced so we try to look for as many different categories that we can enter that video in and you know sometimes you only have more chance in one category than another and you know an Addy award for one thing is still an Addy award so uh, just think, think about that care and as we go throughout the year we always think about kind of the awards as we kind of move into production and making things so we can get some little kind of like behind the scenes stuff or a, a, a little soundbite from someone or just take some pictures as we're going through just to help tell that story later on when it comes uh, when it comes to submitting the awards and not only is that useful I think for the awards it's also useful for the agency is case skills and to share with with other clients so I, I keep that in mind i always maybe become lazy i don't know but uh like this year with, with with the awards coming up i had a meeting with the creative department and said okay get your entries together you know what you want to enter put that stuff on the site and then we can all review it together but um again yeah try not to compete with yourself everybody everything in they can only give out a certain amount of awards in that category so just have a think about that um what else have i got written down here um yeah i can share with you and sarah has a piece of work like we always believe in the world of course because we did it we think it's the best and sometimes when uh the judges look at it they might not necessarily agree with you and um we did some work uh, uh last year uh, only wait on a silver luckily at the birmingham addies but then it went on to uh, the national addy so we paid for it to be received and and it won so we said well they weren't we, we showed him who was right in the end so <laughs> i don't know if you I, what we did was we put a case study video together and um of course, we, we also submitted some stills and things, but I, I think it's important as well. You'll see with this piece to kind of put it into context, you know, what, how that uh, work was being viewed by, by the audience at the time and how it was relevant to them. Because sometimes if you just submit something, the judges just don't know. They could look at it and think, oh, that doesn't make sense to me. So kind of like give it some context, a bit of, you know, um, information around it on this particular video uh we had some results but i don't think that's necessarily important you know the judges look really at the the, the quality of the work and how well it was produced rather than necessarily the results so if you just want to say if you can play that video and can answer any questions if anybody has any yep let me pull it up here All right, hopefully the volume will come through okay. With a global pandemic, a war in Europe, and skyrocketing inflation, the world is feeling a lot of stress. That's why we decided to give people a break and take their minds on a relaxing vacation to Alabama with our Mind Trips campaign. Close your eyes now. I want you to relax, breathe deep. We hired a hypnotist to take people's minds on a trip to Alabama simply by watching a video. They could experience Alabama without ever leaving their homes. 
pre-roll videos teased and directed viewers to our website. Once viewers arrived at our website, they could engage in a fully immersive online session with our hypnotist simply by sitting back, listening, and relaxing. With over 9 million impressions in paid media alone, the campaign achieved over 4 million ad video views, all contributing to a 30% increase in lodging tax collections year to date. And a whole load of relaxed people looking to book their next vacation in Alabama. So that's the video. I would say if you are going to do a video, uh, keep it short or try and keep it as short as it can be. If you think the people that are judging, if they're having to wait through videos that are 10, 15 minutes long, oh, I don't know where they're going to get the, the full attention that they deserve. So it kind of just hit people with the main uh, talking of the work. I saw somebody ask a question as well about submitting websites. Kind of this work here, the, what we did it, we, uh, we, we made five minutes on hypnosis videos. Uh, so we, we entered those videos in uh, like another long format video category. But for like for the website, like we did, you know, just screenshots of the, the site. I think it's always good to see the working context. Uh, so we just did some, you know, locked up uh, what the work would look like on a computer screen and two things that were relevant and obviously added a URL there so that people could uh, click through and see. And again, from experience from judging, if you are going to put a link on there for people to see the work, make sure that it's people can see it. Sometimes you get on and it says password protected, doesn't load correctly. So as simple as possible for the for the for the judges viewing things and I think you'll be good to go and go up and all the way I hope. Yeah so a couple of other quick notes just from a, a rules standpoint. If you are submitting a case study video, a PowerPoint deck, a URL, it is important that everything be labeled anonymously for the entrance. So in this case, you are welcome to brand it for the client. You saw the PowerPoint deck from Susan was all branded for Jack Daniels. This video was branded for Alabama Tourism. It is not branded for Finn Partners and Intermark. Um, and the reason for that is so that the judges do not know who created the work when they are reviewing it. It's also important for you guys to know that the judging rules state that judges must come from not only outside of the market, but outside of the district in order to prevent the chance that they saw it live in the media. Obviously, if you're working with a national client, that's a little trickier, but for most of us who are entering regional work, that just gives some assurance that they don't already have a predisposition to the work one way or the other. The last note on websites to add to what Keith said, um, there is a spot in the software for you to submit screenshots, as he mentioned, as well as the URL. Be sure that it's not behind a password uh, section. If you do have a site that includes a password protected section, let's say you built um, a business website and it's got an employee portal or it's got a login that's specifically for customers or users, you are allowed to capture video, like logged in yourself and record video of scrolling through that site so that the judges can see it. Because when they go to log in, if they don't have that URL, everything that's behind that magical red curtain will not be considered in their scoring. So just keep that in mind if you do have a site that includes sections that are really compelling for content, but that are behind some sort of a gate. All right. Um, any other questions for Keith or Susan before we shift gears a little bit and talk about students? We do have a we do have a couple questions in the chat. Um, okay. Thank you for already addressing the one about websites. Um, what somebody asked about an example of a wayfinding project and some any tips for submitting something like that. I assume that question is thinking about like wayfinding signage, perhaps. I think I would assume so. Yes. I mean, I would think photography in context of the environment would be key there. Um, so as um, as Susan said, you know, context is is key and understanding the environment that the, that the design is in. So why, wayfinding is, you know, perhaps the best example of having to show something in context. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And in that case, you could drop that in a PowerPoint deck and it could be a photo of the area and an explanation of what the traffic looks like. And then you show the piece designed for that. 
It could be a video if you have video footage and the voiceover explains. I think it's important for everyone to know that the production value of the video is also not what the judges are reviewing. They are judging the concept, the copy, the idea. So if it is in a category for outdoor, as an example, they're judging the outdoor artwork, not how much they like the voiceover of your video talking about the outdoor. Um, so just keep that in mind if you've got in-house resources to, pr to produce those videos and case studies, or if you do not, um, that's really up to you. It's more about the storytelling and the context. We actually did a, a something a couple of years ago for Alabama Tourism again that won nationally, which was kind of a wayfinding thing. It was everybody thinks the original Mardi Gras is in New Orleans, but in fact, it's in uh, Mobile, Alabama. So we did a series of five billboards that as you were driving uh, into um, New Orleans, it said you are now only X amount of miles away from the the nation's first Mardi Gras. And what we did, which is had shots of those billboards. Mm -hmm. That was a we're losing you, Keith. At least yeah, I lost the, the last part of your audio there. <laughs> Oh, I'm so my internet connection is not very good. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, we just we submitted photographs of the billboards, in, we just showed them, and and then we just had a little bit of a, a brief explanation as to to why we did what we did and put it into context, and it was enough to win. Yeah, I think that piece of advice kind of goes for everything, just providing as much context as you can. Um, we have several questions about submitting illustrations or custom music, copywriting, things like that. I think the context is important and just when you can submit some kind of interact, not interactive, but multimedia <laughs> uh, video or explanation. Um, and I think Key said something really important, or I think it was Susan who said, um, if you can even include information from the client's creative brief in your explanation of your process, that's invaluable also. So I think that goes for pretty much any submission, um, just providing context and maybe explaining process, things like that. Right. Also back to, and I can't remember who said it, but Sarah, maybe you were saying that the um, case study videos, um, the, the judges are supposed to be judging the work and not necessarily the video, but it's hard to... Um, you know, to not let that influence you a little bit. So if the video is, if the voiceover is horrible, the edit is bad, the photography is bad, whatever, it's, it, it can't help but influence your, you know, your feelings about the work. So give it, give it as much attention as, as you can to make sure that the video or the, the presentation is top notch as well. And if video is is out of reach for those reasons, you know, even a simple slide deck would do. I mean, if you're talking about copy as an example, just outlining, you know, this project is for such and such and the target audience is X, Y, and Z. And this is what we know about that audience so that then when the judges read the copy, they have that context in mind. Um, so again, it's, it's the storytelling piece that you're assisting with um, and not necessarily the results side of it. Many case studies that we get will include some of those facts like the one that Keith shared, um, but this competition is about the creativity and the quality of the idea and the execution. It is not only about the results um, as there are many other award shows out there where that's what they are actually awarding the winners based upon. So it's not an issue if you include any of those nuggets, but again, that's not the main thing the judges are reviewing. So I know we have some specific questions about certain types of entries, but just being cognizant of time, I want to switch gears for just a minute and open it up to Mark and Jacob, who um, both are student advisors and professors at two of the universities here in District 7, um, and talk a little bit about the student prep that goes into the student competition um, who you know aren't necessarily sitting at a, an agency full of resources yet. So Mark and Jacob, what, what can you guys uh, share with the group um, if... We have any students on the call or others that work with students on entries. Go for it, Jacob. 
Well, um, one of the things that we do is we have an Addy night, um, and ours is actually tonight, um, where we, we bring in all of our students together. Um, I usually have a list kind of mentally prepared of all of the projects that students do um, in, a, in our program and then kind of break that into the categories because a lot of times they don't know, you know, should this go in this category, should this go in that category, um, and that kind of thing. Um, another thing that we do for all of our projects that really helps out for their entries is they have to photograph all of their pieces, um, especially if they're 3D pieces. And so that's that's part of the project. And um, so that's one of the things that really aids with um, getting getting student entries. Obviously, there's things like, you know, getting them bonus points for entering and um, and stuff like that. But I also try to make sure that there's a lot of hype um, to get them to enter. Um, Mark, you want to? Uh, yeah, so um, <clears throat> we here, I'm at the University of Alabama I'm with the Minerva Portfolio Program. Um, the how we kind of do it is similar to Jacob. Um, I'm keeping kind of a tally of the stuff that I think is rising to the um, top of the heap, you know, because um, a lot of work comes in that you just know that there's no it's just not at that level to compete. Um, but then there's a lot of work that is, and, uh, I kind of, we, we do it 50, 50 with the students essentially of, we have them prepare all the work. Um, but I help package the actually in, actual entries part of it, because when you, when you enter the work, um, and this is for everybody, not just students, when you enter the work, there's fields to, you know, your agency or your school or something like that. But some students might put in the University of Alabama, some per some students might have put in UA, some person, some students might put in University of Alabama, whatever. Um, and then those things kind of get separated because of the data, like it's all in a database. Um, uh, so the, the tallies are harder to tally once you start winning things. Um, I would, I would say, as far as getting students excited about it. Um, it's not that tough to get them excited about the possibility of winning stuff, especially, I mean, in this industry, we're doing so much critique that at which point we start saying this, this is really good. We should enter it in an award and see in a contest, see if we can win it. They tend to perk up um, and get excited about it. And then within the, you know, within their cohort or whatever, everybody starts kind of uh, the competition within before the competition is pretty good um they start you know it makes the work better um i will say that you didn't ask about this sarah but can i just yeah based on some comments earlier um in the end all of this is really great to talk about but it truly is about the work if you if you've got work um and you're trying to kind of scheme the game and set it up to to make sure it wins if the work is fantastic it's got a shot. If the work is not fantastic, it probably doesn't have a shot. No matter if you're scheming the entry category and stuff like that, just do really great work um, and package it to tell the story of the work. So the context is important. Tell the story of the work itself. Talk about, you know, if if the target, I've had a student that did some stuff for Red Bull, but they targeted um, retirees instead of the young, normal Red Bull target audience. Uh, that's important to con give that context. Otherwise, everything else, you know, it starts to not make sense. Um, so packaging it is important, but the most important part of it is is the work. Yeah, so one of the things that um, District 7 really encourages, and I know many of our local markets do as well, is the local AAF chapter trying to support the students. Um, and, you know, in some cases, the university helps subsidize their entry fees. Sometimes they do not. Um, there are a couple of clubs that do offer to forward student silvers onto the district level at the, the cost of AAF. So just know also if you are a student out there or someone who works with the students, reach out to your local AAF chapter and, and ask if there's any way that you can partner or be supported. Um, there are oftentimes ways 
that include monetary or not. Sometimes it's just time and it's taking a look at that work, like what Mark's describing and, and helping identify this would be really great in category A, B, or C. So um, the student work is really important. Uh, they are in fact, the ones coming for all of our jobs. So it's nice to see the work that's coming out of the universities and uh, those that will be co-workers for many of us in the next few years. And for and real quick, forwarding stuff is important. So we've been lucky enough to have um, a couple of national addies, one from the program. Um, one of the ones that won gold, won silver local, silver district, and then won gold at national. So pay, you know, take if you're going to go for it, go for it. Yeah, and we use that as an um, our past national addies as an example um, because that's happened to us. And so every year we have students who you know, they're going to silver and they'll feel a little bit, you know, down about getting a silver. And it's like, hey, look, you know, we've got a banner on the wall that's got, you know, our our national Addy winners is like they also got silver and, and they made it to national. So it's it is really good to kind of reinforce that. 100 percent. All right. So I know we've uh, jumped in a little bit and, and Jeff, you've already shared a, a few nuggets, but um, Jeff has been a judge for several American Advertising Awards competitions, um, including some in our district, as I mentioned. So um, definitely wanted you guys to get a chance to hear from him as well when he logs into that software and starts reviewing these entries, things that he's looking for, red flags, do's and don'ts. Um, so Jeff, would you like to share a few tips? Sure. Um, I was going to talk a lot about context, but I think we've kind of beat that horse dead. Um, but you know, as Mark said, tell the story of the piece as, as best you can. Um, another thing I want to talk about, and I was thinking about it when Susan was sharing that Jack Daniels um, kit, is um, just being strategic about how you enter pieces. I know the rules allow you to enter a piece in as many categories as are relevant. Um, so Susan, in looking at that box, I was like, wow, that could be that could be a sales kit that could be a direct mail package. It could be a packaging entry. And then can you pull out the units in the, in the box? So are some of those brochures worthy of, of being their own entries? So when you're, when you're entering your work, think about, um, you know, how many categories, if it's a strong piece of work, there's nothing like seeing a really lousy piece of work in, you know, 10 categories, but um, if you have a really great piece, I think leveraging it as much as possible is a, is a good idea. Um, as, as Sarah said, we used to have way more fun judging when, you know, they'd fly us in and wine and dine us for a couple of days. Um, and you'd actually, you know, you, you'd submit, um, a brochure with embossing and beautiful paper and beautiful printing, and you could hold it in your hands and, and really, feel what's so wonderful about it and obviously we can't do that now so you know this is sort of related to context again but um try to like for a for a beautiful brochure if there's a if there's an emboss and it's textured paper you know do some detail um Im images of that so you can really get the, get get a feeling for for what the piece is is so you can feel it just by looking at it um, you know, photograph it in in a pair of hands so you get a a sense of the size and the scale. If it's a big piece or a little piece, that that matters. Um, what else? You know, I, I see a lot of just PDFs, even some with like crop marks still. That's like, exactly what I was going to say. Are you kidding me? You know, <laughs> so if you're going to submit a PDF, at least at least don't include the crop marks. Um, but again, um, you know, billboards don't just do a PDF. Photoshop it and take a picture if you can, but if you can't, Photoshop it into an image that of, of a billboard so you get a sense of the scale and how it looks from a distance and, and, and the power of the idea. Yeah, I know that it's very simple to just attach those files like Jeff is describing, and, and I can tell you there are entries that make it to the district level that we see like that. And it's an outdoor category and it's just three JPEGs that are attached. And when you open a JPEG on a computer screen, it's the same proportions as a banner ad. It could be a print ad. It could be an outdoor board without being very clear about what that piece is and where it goes. It's easy for the judges to skim through it quickly as well. Um, it's not because they don't want to give the work the time. 
but you're making the work harder for them to review when there's a JPEG on my screen that I don't know how it's being used. So those extra little steps like dropping it into environment or taking photos really, really make a difference. Yeah. And there are, there are a bank of, of those sort of stock um, contextual images, even like iPhones with, you know, Instagram, um, Instagram feed images where you can just drop the things in. So, so if it's a social ad and it's, you know, it's only this big, you're not just looking at a tiny JPEG, you're looking at it and you can imagine, oh, scrolling through Instagram and seeing this amazing idea. So um, again, context, context, context is, is key. Uh, what else? Um, I, I guess this is more about, you know, deciding what to enter, but you know, I think being hard on yourself when you're deciding what to enter is important. Sarah, I know you want people to enter as much as possible, but um, trying to really be hard on yourself and say, is this really a, is this really a great idea? And is this a winning entry? And maybe, um, you know, whether you're at a, a big agency or a, a small office, getting some opinions from people that you work with. Um, yeah, I, I've, I've judged a bunch, but it was also my job at our agency to, you know, get the list together and decide what we're entering. And I would, I would always pull people in and say, what, you know, what do you think about this? You know, is this worthy? And um, it's a nice way to get other people involved in the process, but also you get, you get some objective opinions on, on what's a good idea and what's a mediocre idea. Yeah, so. that's a good point, Jeff. And I think just, again, so everyone understands the the rules that are set out by national have guidelines for what the percentages of winners look like. So it is based on a, a percentage of the total number of entries in each market. So if you've got a market with 100 entries or a market with 400 entries, there is a cap on the percentage of those entries that can receive a gold Addy and a cap for a silver okay. Addy. So that's not subjective at the local level. That's not up to the judges who just decide that they're feeling really generous that day or really stingy that day. Those percentages are set out in the national guidelines. Yeah, thankfully, we're right around the corner from where they meet. I'm sorry. Well, I remember how to get there as well, I think. We're not very far. I know how to get to the home first, which sorry. is- oh, Oya, you're not <laughs> muted. Sorry. You're good. No worries. Um, so anyhow, those those percentages are set out in the rule book um, and the they are really there to ensure that the best work is what rises to the top and gets forwarded to the next level. Um, so if you've got questions about that, the, the rules and categories are, of course, posted and you can study them. I know that it can be overwhelming to dig through all of those categories. We've had a few questions in here already about should I put this work in that category or, or this one? Also know that one of the roles of the awards chairs when they receive all of that work is to do a quick spot check. Does this feel like it's in the right place? And if something is entered in a category that doesn't make sense, it might get moved during the judging process to the place where it shows better. Um, so that is something that the judges are encouraged to do as well. In the example of, of Susan's uh, Jack Daniels kit, if that was entered in direct mail, but everybody really felt like it should be in sales kit, they would have the option to move it, or it's possible that Finn entered it in both and it was already there. Um, so that is part of the consideration as well when you're thinking about what categories to drop the work into. Rebecca, do we have other questions in the chat? I realize we're we're coming up on an hour here, so I want to make sure we cover everyone's questions. Yeah, the one kind of not last, but one other question in the chat is, you know, just talking about how do we um determine what is quote unquote Addy award worthy. Um, Mark had a good comment about engaging with your local club, um, getting feedback from other professionals in your area who submit, bouncing ideas off of them maybe. Um, I also just posted a link to where National posts their previous year's uh, winner's book so you can see what's won at the national level. And I know several um, chapters do that as well. After the awards are over, we'll post um, either their presentation uh, from the show or a winner's book. Uh, and the district, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the district shows are posted on the district YouTube channel. So they're actually on the district website. There's a winner's okay. book and then there's also the actual video reels if you want to watch all of the video content. So the spot where things like case study videos and, and TV spots are dropped in. So those are all on the, the District 7 site as well if you want to check out the winners from last year. Mm -hmm. 
I, I find the um the video category the most confusing one. We've often, you know, have a great piece of video and we're like, well, is it branded content? Is it an internet commercial? Is it a, it seems like there are, I don't know, five different ones and, and one never seems to be the right fit. So I know that's not your your job, Sarah, that comes from national, but um, we always we always have a hard time deciding what category to put the video in. Yeah, they've done a little bit of work to try and try and clarify a little more in the rules. Um, and you know, things that are specifically in television have to have aired in broadcast media versus an internet commercial is a little bit more of a catch-all because it could be YouTube, it could be, you know, um social, it could be in-house. Yeah. I think the place where they've tried to do the most is um, separating things like podcasts. There is now a, a category for podcasts for a while that just kind of got chunked into audio. So that's newer in the last two years that podcasts have been added as a, a category. And then branded content is one that they added a little bit of language as well, trying to make it clear that these could include infomercials. So that's a place where like a longer format of a video would go when that's not a traditional 30 second TV spot. Um, so there are some little write-ups in the rules, Okay. but if you're ever not sure exactly where to put it, reach out to your local awards chair um, and ask for their advice because the goal would be for like kinded entries to be in the same category. Um, and if there's one outlier sitting in branded content and everything else is an internet commercial, part of that is also the, the responsibility of the awards chair to look at it and say, is this different? Or should this really be all together in, in internet commercials or, or whatever the category might be? Right. I mean, all that being said, if it's an awesome video, it's going to win no matter what category it's in. But yep. from, an, from an entrant standpoint, it is, it is confusing. Mm -hmm. The last note related to that, as, as Jeff said, so we're clear, uh, Sarah Jones doesn't write those rules. Um, <laughs> but one of my roles is to take any of that feedback up to the national committee. So if you do find yourself with questions or confusion as you're going through the entrant entry process, just jot down a quick note. Um, feel free to send a note to your local awards chair or certainly reach out to me. That feedback is really important as it folds into the national committee and they do a review of those rules every year. And if they hear from multiple people that there's confusion around a particular category or the call for a new category like podcast as an example, that's the way it gets into the rules. So if you find yourself unsure or frustrated with one of the categories, speak up um, because you're probably not alone. Um, and that's the best way for us to pass that feedback along to the national committee who will do a review going into next year's competition. All right, we have about seven minutes left. Um, so happy to open up to any any other questions or Rebecca, if we've not covered any others in the chat? Um, I think we've gotten everything in the chat. Uh, one thing I kind of wanted to clarify with discussion on categories is that, um, you know, the scoring is just raw number scoring. You're not necessarily going up against others in your category. It's not like, you know, there's an Addy given, a gold given for each category. So while the categories are important as an organizing mechanism, they're not necessarily important as a scoring mechanism. Right. Yeah, there are some categories where there's no winners, right? Yep. Right, right. So just um, for anybody who is curious about if the category has impact on the score, not necessarily. <laughs> right. Yep, that's a good point of clarification. Thank you, Rebecca. Any other questions from the group? Um, Cece asked if it matters if one project is entered it se in several categories for the judges. Does it matter to the judges or do they consider that? Look at that. <clears throat> um, one project entered in several categories that wins everything. Um, not really. I mean, if it's a great, if it's a great piece, um, I mean, sometimes you'll give it, um, a higher score in a certain category versus another, but, um, so yeah, I guess it does. It, it, it can, the category can skew whether 
you know, how effective, how effective it is. Um, I don't have a good example, but, but the answer is, yeah. One that we see that at the district level anyways, um, is when you have a campaign. Um, so thinking about the mind trip campaign that Keith shared in that example, they entered it into the campaign category, which had the overview of the whole campaign and the case study. It, ref it referred the website, it referred to the the ads as well as the spots. They also entered the spots in as individual entries. And in some cases, the judges liked one of the spots better than the others. So an individual spot won a gold, but the other individual spot didn't, but then the campaign also won. So that's maybe a good example of where multiple categories come into play um, and the context that the judges are thinking about. Maybe the outdoor that's part of the campaign contributes to the whole and the campaign wins a gold, but the outdoor, when it stands alone in the outdoor category for that singular board, it's, it's nice work, but it's not the most compelling work on its own. Um, so in that case, again, it, an individual piece doesn't necessarily automatically win gold just because the campaign did. Um, and that might be a roundabout answer to your question, Cece. Anyone else? All right. Well, first, I'd like to thank our panelists for agreeing to spend some time with us this morning and, and taking questions. Um, we have recorded this, so we will share it out with the local awards chairs and also on the District 7 uh, page for any of you that want to refer back to it. Um, and again, take a look at past winners. And if you've got any questions as you get going, reach out to your local awards chair or certainly reach out to me and we'll be happy to help you. Um, otherwise, want to wish everyone the best of luck in this year's competition. And I look forward to seeing all of your work. Thank Thanks you so much. Time. Thanks, everyone. Good luck. Bye. All right, ladies, you want to close out the recording?